Hello, Gemini. Welcome to Leo season. This reading is for any Gemini identified folks out there. Gemini sun, Gemini rising, Gemini moon. If you know your placements in Gemini, because everyone has Gemini in their chart, you can listen for your house placement or any planets or points um, in Gemini as well. In the first part of the reading, I'm going to just tune in with your chart and see what the chart wants to say. This will be the overarching themes and uh, kind of general reading for Leo season. And in the second part, I'm going to look at timing uh, throughout the season and we'll get a little bit more specific as to how these themes are playing out. In some ways, this reading is timeless. So if you happen to come across it and it's not Leo season anymore, it still might be a message that will serve you in the future, whenever that may be. Leo season in 2024 begins on July 22nd and ends on August 22nd. All right, Gemini, Leo holds a very special place in your chart. The place where it lands in the solar chart is called the third house. And the third place in the chart is a place that is actually, in a lot of ways, uh, very resonant with Gemini energy. Um, Gemini, you might know, is the third sign of the zodiac. And so the third place is a place that brings a lot of the same kind of themes and significations as Gemini does. It has to do with communication. It has to do with conversation and sharing of information and data, especially in the ways that information is shared in uh, more close in ways. So I'm not necessarily talking about uh, watching the news, I'm talking about the information that you get from your neighbor or from your friend or what you pick up from the general environment. The third house is a place of the general environment and it has a lot to do with your capacity for uh, meaning making and perception and how you learn because of how you are shaped and influenced by what and who is around you. The opposite of the third place, the ninth place, has to do with bigger, broader communications. So this is where you are watching the news, you are reading books, you are uh, going to talks and events where you're participating in like ph philosophical discussions, or maybe you're engaged in uh, some kind of pursuit of big knowledge, big picture knowledge. This axis of third and ninth place is really stimulated throughout Leo season, and I'm going to be talking about both of these areas uh, a fair amount. But I wanted to actually begin with a little bit of information, because I think that Gemini is a sign that needs and likes to have information, and especially if we're working with something like astrology, which is in many ways a mystical and occult practice and also uh, thought technology. Um, it is ancient. It has emerged all across the world in various shapes and forms. Um, and it's also dealing with unseen forces and uh, things like planetary and celestial energetics, which are not necessarily something that science has quite caught up with yet in the ways that astrologers have always known that they worked, um, I think Gemini likes to have some things explained. And over the course of Leo season, there's actually a need for Gemini to make sense of the unseen realms and to be working intelligently with information that might not have um, a place inside of consensus reality or kind of like status quo logic. Um, I think a lot of you are working right now to cultivate your intuition. You may be working with mystical practices of some kind. And certainly in Leo season, there are some whispers uh, from the unseen realms that want you to pay attention. And I'm giving you the information about your chart because I uh, kind of want to encourage you to believe and research what is coming up for you in Leo season, particularly if it's coming through the realms of uh, the unseen, through intuition, through your dreams, um, or through mystical or occult practices such as astrology or tarot or other forms of divination. I think that it's useful for you right now to get the information that you need in order to make sense of how things are working, particularly things that haven't been uh, historically recognized as 
as like quote unquote valid um, or things that may not even really make sense to you because how they're emerging for you um, feels a little uh, new in certain ways this season. So this is actually one of the main themes is what you are doing with information right now. Um, Gemini, you have a passion and a hunger for information. Your sign is one that definitely brings a lot to the table when it comes to um, capacity to intake data and uh, knowledge streams from all different directions to make new connections between them and to do the work of meaning making. The Gemini influence encourages us to build new neural pathways. One of the key words for Gemini is curiosity. And this is a season that is asking you to expand and extend and enjoy and indulge your curiosity. The world is your oyster right now. There is so much sensory information all around you. Everybody is talking. The flowers, the birds, the bees, the people around you, the clouds in the sky, the feelings in your body, the buildings and the way they've been built. Everybody has a message that they want to share. And when you bring this attitude of curiosity and openness into your environment, when you extend the potential, the possibility that uh, everybody and everything has a message to share. Um, for example, I'm holding this shell. And if you're watching the video, you can see um, this really beautiful shell. And I work with talismans and sacred objects, um, many of which I have picked up um, somewhere in nature. And I feel that these um, material manifestations give me a lot. They give me support. They give me something to hold and fidget as I'm talking to you. But I also get information uh, when I tune in with what I'm holding. Sometimes I just can ask a question and who knows how it works. Uh, but I believe that there is some kind of sentience or frequency between all life on planet Earth and communication is happening all the time. And this shell that I'm holding has its own perspective and it has um, knowledge that it can share with me. And if I tune in with it, maybe I can glean some of that knowledge. Gemini, it feels like Leo season is a season that is asking you to play and expand in the realms of your imagination. Just like I was talking about, probably just like you did when you were a little kid. Kids are experts at this kind of communion and communication. Uh, they are very active in their imaginative intelligences and often they are picking up on information that adults just miss. I also wanna say that it requires discernment, right? So I might ask the shell for some guidance um, in various realms of my life, uh, but I need to be discerning around what I pick up from that information, what I actually do with it and how I communicate about it. I'm gonna say that the information that I get in these ways tends to be more of a felt sense. It's more poetic. It's not necessarily advice on like how to file my taxes or what to do uh, for some kind of practical problem in my life, though it may help me approach that problem with an attitude adjustment or a perspective um, that will be assistive in actually getting to the answer that I need. And my feeling for you right now is that you are really wanting and needing to blend and find the in-between spaces between playfulness and imagination and logic and practicality. You have a lot of questions right now. Gemini, your questions are sacred. The questions that come through Gemini intelligence are the questions that help life to adapt and evolve. If we think about Gemini in the uh, world as an elemental manifestation, it's part of the air uh, triplicity and it is movable air. It's air that is shifting states. Air is, of course, the stuff that we breathe. And in the air element, we have the substance of connection. 
all breath and respiration across life forms on planet Earth is shared. And this shared breath is very much a part of the Gemini intelligence. Gemini understands that knowledge is constantly recreating itself. Every in-breath that you take is the exhale of plant and tree friends. Your exhales give back to them. The thoughts that are in your head are the words and the uh, teachings of <clears throat> those that you have benefited from and learned from in your life, your family, your friends, your teachers, your culture. Uh, we're always picking up what others are putting down. And as we pick up what's available, we're doing our own kind of metabolic alchemical transmutation with it and then giving it back to the world. This is what Gemini does. It moves air. In the movement of air, we have the cultivation of intelligence, and air is always looking for the current to ride. And right now, it feels like the cultivation of your intelligence really wants to ride a current of playful imagination and inspiration. So my first piece of this reading for Leo season is Gemini. Where do you find uh, stimulation for your mind in ways that feel pleasing and entertaining and engaging and inspiring? Can you give yourself more of that? And can you give it to yourself in really intentional ways that contribute to your healing and potentially to the ways that you are sharing air in the world around you, how you might be telling stories, passing on information, thinking about things and therefore embodying and enacting them. Some ways that might really serve you right now are ways that feel creative, poetic, and artistic. This is a great season for you to take in beauty, to surround yourself with the kinds of information that spark new ideas and that feed the hunger that you have to get more curious about more things. Um, if you're a Gemini who worries about being distracted, uh, I'm going to say that in Leo season, you can put that worry on the back burner because this is a season that is definitely encouraging you to follow your interests and explore how what might even seem like totally divergent interests or distractions between things actually have associations and information to give one another. I find this all the time as an intuitive that even when I think I'm aimless, often the uh, higher intelligence that's moving through me is needing to experience something so that I can come back to whatever it is that I'm trying to do with some kind of expanded perspective. The more that I can tune in with my life and the world around me as full of symbolism and living substance and its own intelligence, the more I benefit from the intelligences that are beyond my logical linear mind. And Gemini, I feel like I'm telling you things that you probably already know, but maybe reminding you that you get to do this and that it's a good thing for you. It's not always just like whatever acronym you want to give yourself um, in terms of like attention deficit or something like that. Let's say that you have expansive attention and um, creative attention and when you tune in with those patterns, there is actually a lot of interconnections between the places, spaces, people, and ideas that are calling to you from their various corners. Throughout the course of Leo season, I also really want to encourage you to feel into the ways that this natural innate curiosity and playfulness and interest in the environment uh, is actually potentially a part of your teaching and your offering in the world. We have a lot of examples in the world of teachers who are really serious about teaching. Um, we live in a world that definitely values expertise and the notions of expertise that many of us are accustomed to are deeply steeped in patriarchy and white supremacy. Often the experts that are out there are the people who come from backgrounds that have given them access to certain institutions of education, to public 
publishing books to having their voice heard, et cetera, et cetera. You know all that. There is a lot of hunger and a lot of need for uh, diverse voices and perspectives right now. There's a lot of hunger and a lot of need for people who are dismantling the ideas of uh, experts and actually uplifting collective intelligence, offering folks the uh, possibility that they are experts of their own experience and that when we come into space with one another in ways that are curious, playful, exploratory, um, listening, that actually our collective intelligence is much greater than any individual can conceive of or contain. I think that a lot of you are feeling a shift in your life right now that is asking you to step more fully into the role of some kind of teacher. Um, that word teacher or expert or advisor, possibility model, role model, lots of ways that you might um, put language around that feeling, make the meaning that's meaningful for you, use your own language. That role is calling to you right now. There's something about it that feels like it is uh, pulling at your attention and sense of possibility. Now, if you've never thought of yourself as somebody who might be a teacher, um, over the course of Leo season, I just want you to entertain the thought. Imagine if you were teaching, what would you teach? And I really encourage you to imagine styles of teaching that allow you to not be an expert, but to be confident in your offering and to come from a place that is innate and natural to you, that is actually a place of curiosity. My personal opinion, the best teachers are really good students. They are people who continue to expand their learning, who stay humble, who don't think that even after decades of deep study that they know it all, who are willing to listen to people who are across the spectrum, uh, different from them, whether that's older, younger, speaking different languages from different perspectives. The best teachers know that they don't know everything. To know that there's a lot that you don't know is actually a symbol of deep wisdom. And Gemini, I think that a lot of you um, know this. Sometimes maybe you forget this. Gemini's minds move fairly quickly. You are wildly intelligent people. I think you do know a lot. A lot of times you know a lot more than the experts. Um, but I think that also part of the Gemini gift, which is the gift of humor and mimicry and comedy and making fun of things, is to know that there's a lot that you don't know and you can play with that. And that energy is a teaching in and of itself, especially at a time on earth when there is a kind of intensifying fascism and extremism and people out there acting like they know what's the best for everybody else. And meanwhile, they can barely tell their head from their ass, right? So how can you give us a possibility model that is playful, exploratory, curious, and inviting of this energy of learning and open expansiveness uh, in multiple different directions. Another big theme uh, coming through in Leo season kind of follows from this. And the feeling that I have for you is that there is an increasing sense of maturation and professionalism that you are really needing to believe in in yourself and integrate and empower yourself with. So this role of being a teacher may be part of it. There is a kind of long arc of transformation beginning in your life right now that is asking you to really step onto a particular path. And this path is about expanding intelligence and in some way offering that intelligence to others. That could be through your examples. It could be through your words. It could be through your artistry. It could be through your parenting. Lots of different ways that you might do it. But still, you're stepping into a place where more and more people are looking up to you. The feeling of this maturation and being taken seriously in new and different ways uh, will do a thing to a person. I think that it can equally build confidence and insecurity. And in Leo season, I think a lot of you are in some place of maybe a little bit of tension, uh, feeling into how you want to hold these new responsibilities that you are embodying and the ways that other people are increasingly looking up to you. 
My hope is that you come into this space and into this role again with curiosity, with humility, with a sense of playfulness, and also the invitation to join you in that space, that you're thinking about uh, lifting others up as you ascend and not trying to put yourself on a pedestal. Uh, when people try and do that, they may seem more confident, they may act more confident, but internally uh, putting ourselves up on a pedestal will only create anxiety and insecurity and separation between ourselves and others. This is not what you want right now. You want a feeling of more connection, playfulness, and collaboration. And this brings me back to who's out there? What's talking to you? How can you meet the connections and communications that are coming towards you in ways that are inviting, generative, regenerative, and generous? All right, Gemini, let's uh, go through the season following the moon. Leo season begins with a full moon. The full moon is exact in the last hours of cancer season. So this full moon that kicks us off into Leo season is a full moon at the very last degree of Capricorn. This is a full moon that feels like a very important culmination of a period of time that has actually really deeply transformed you. Over the last 15 years, Geminis have been traversing some kind of dark night of the soul. <laughs> That's a phrase that a lot of people will use for a period of time when you get to experience ego death, when you might get to uh, experience all kinds of losses, when you have to confront your uh, kind of unprocessed, unconscious baggage. Uh, these are periods of time when you may actually be held in some kind of space and it feels like you can't move or can't get out of there. These spaces may be relational, they may be financial, they may be familial, they may have something to do uh, with your own sense of self-confidence or capacity. Over the last 15 years, a lot of you have been held in a kind of space that was not always or maybe even very often very comfortable. I think that you've done a lot of inner work and especially in the last four years, you've done a lot of work to transmute and transform this energy so that it can uh, help you expand and welcome in new possibilities in your life. And that is exactly what is starting to happen now. So as we move into Leo season, there is a distinct feeling in your chart of a new horizon being shown to you. As you see the new horizon, an adventure is opening up. You didn't even know a year or four years ago that you were headed in that direction. And now you see it and the road is opening in front of you. And when you're on that kind of uh, let's say mountaintop and you're looking over the vista and you see where you want to go, you get the big picture. But the map is not the same as the terrain. We haven't actually begun the journey quite yet. And so there's also a sense of anticipation. And I think a lot of you need to tie up some loose ends so that you can really uh, complete whatever this last chapter has been about. Over the next couple of months, you are completing and tying up those loose ends. For many of you, there are some uh, financial threads that are <laughs> waving around out there that you want to um, gather in or cut cords with. Uh, this could be a kind of literal situation where um, you might need to pay a debt or you might need to collect on a debt or something like that. Um, for some of you, this is more of a metaphor and a feeling that you are coming into a time when the ways that you organize yourself around resource, uh, sustenance and scarcity, as well as abundance is shifting. Um, many of you have experienced in these last 15 years that this kind of tight spot that you've been in has had some component of relationship to materiality, to material substance and survival. For many of us, this has a lot to do with money. Uh, for many of us, this has a lot to do with relationships and intimacy and trust. So these are big themes right now that are coming into a place of completion. 
I think a lot of you have done a lot of healing and you are looking at how these patterns of trauma um, are actually dissolving, I'm going to say, from your body mind and new patterns of deeper stability and integration are settling in. And so as these old patterns dissolve and these new patterns begin to settle in, uh, some of you are doing a little bit of cleanup or completion. There might need to be uh, boundaries set in certain relationships or closures or conversations that need to happen. Uh, certainly over the course of the next several weeks into Virgo season, there is some uh, suggestion for that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but all in all, I think that this is a period of time where the future is expanding in front of you and you are leaving the past behind. I think a lot of you are aware of what is still lingering and has a little bit of residue, but you have what you need in order to finish it up. And I really want to encourage you to uh, make the preparations that you need to finish that if it's something that involves like communications, conversations, paying things off, gathering, stuff that you can actually do. I want you to think about being done done by November at the very latest. The first week of Leo season moves us from that full moon into the uh, fourth quarter lunation. Um, this week is uh, very thick with the sense of culminating something. I feel you in a place of retrospection and um, in a lot of ways release. As we get to that fourth quarter moon, the weekend of uh, July 27th to the 29th or so, um, there's a really deep sense of internal release and transformation. I highly encourage you to get a lot of rest that weekend, Gemini. Uh, again, 26, 27, 28, and 29 of July. Take naps, sleep in, go to bed early. Uh, put yourself in situations where you can fantasize and daydream and indulge your curiosity in very relaxed and nonlinear ways. The following week, as we move from the month of July into the month of August, we are also moving from the first, excuse me, from the fourth quarter to the new moon. We have a new moon in Leo on August 4th. This is a week where your energy is gathering and building. New ideas are forming for you. This is a very playful and creative feeling week in my body as I tune in with your chart. And the sensation that I get is that you have a lot of different neural pathways zinging and buzzing and forming with each other. There's a feeling that you can do or have or experience things that you have not yet even known that you could. It's like, oh, that thing. Oh, I could do that. Oh, that's available. And there's kind of this building excitement in your uh, body mind. The new moon on August 4th is an excellent new moon uh, to really meditate with your inner child, with your sense of heart and personal center. This is a great lunation for you to make some kind of commitment or devotion to your own curiosity, to your learning, and to the ways that you are connected and interconnected in the world around you. This is a time when you're also really well supported to have beautiful con connections and conversations with people, particularly connections and conversations that are open-ended, that are curious, that are playful, that are comedic, etc. It's a great time to do something fun with friends. And again, your friends may be more than human. Enjoy the expansive connections uh, that are all around you. <laughs> On the 4th of August, which is the day of the new moon, Mercury, your ruling planet, is stationing retrograde. Mercury is stationing retrograde in its other sign of domicile. So Mercury is considered to be the ruler or the planetary emissary of both Gemini and Virgo. Mercury will station retrograde in Virgo and move back to Leo, where it stations direct in the end of August. Virgo and Leo are important signs in your chart. I've already talked about Leo's significance, but Virgo holds the root of your chart or the base of your chart. This is the place that we get to when we really personalize your immediate environment. This is a place that signifies your home and family, your sense of belonging, uh, 
sensations of stability, having a place where you get to go and rest when you don't have energy to be out there. Um, in this place in your chart, we find a kind of a, a sense of you can trust something that's underneath you. This is the place of earth. It is the place of uh, our origins and our return. Not everyone has those kinds of feelings with their family and maybe not at home. Uh, and so this is also a Mercury retrograde that's really asking you to tune in with what kinds of adjustments you want to make so that you can feel more supported in your home family spaces. And definitely there are some themes coming up for me that have to do with your social connections, with your friends and with your environment. And the feeling that I have is that you want to create a wide network of support for yourself and really nourish uh, those and that which helps you feel uh, most safe, most seen, and really steady and stable in your sense of belonging. So this could be different for everybody, but I think that there are strong elements of aesthetic coming in for me. Um, I want to say that when spaces are designed in ways that are pleasing for you, they help your nervous system feel safe and calibrated. Uh, what's pleasing for you might not be pleasing for your housemate. And so this may also be a period of time when you need to engage with some conversations and negotiations with anyone that you might be involved with uh, in ways that resonate with the themes of home and family. This may also be a time when some of you are uh, kind of doing some preliminary research about how you might build more stability for yourself. Stability in this moment can definitely continue to mean home and family, networks, spaces of belonging. It can also mean resource. It can mean uh, ways that you connect to uh, like earthly matter, whether that's money, whether that's possessions, whether that's space and place. And I think that some of you are trying to figure out how to uh, coordinate in some way uh, so that you can build something that is more supportive uh, for yourself. And accessing resources is a big theme for it. And in this week that follows the new moon, so from August 4th through August 12th, I think that this uh, really takes a lot of your concentration and focus. I feel like a lot of you are trying to put things in place that are very practical. How do you take care of yourself on the day to day? This means your rhythms and routines. It means uh, your consumption. Are you able to get the food that you need, uh, the water that you need to drink? Where are you sleeping, et cetera? Um, you want to do what you need to do during this time to arrange an environment that is as pleasing, beneficial, and supportive for yourself as possible. As we move from August 12th into the end of Leo season, so basically the last 10 days of the season, we are coming into a window of astrological uh, influences that is one of the most intense and extreme in 2024 so far. 2024 so far has been giving intense and extreme. Uh, so you might hear that and be like, oh my goodness, what's next? I don't know. Uh, I too am <laughs> awaiting with anticipation to see uh, what's coming through, especially around this full moon on August 19th. The feeling that I have is that as individuals, we are trying to live our lives, but we are also part of the moment. We are part of our environments, we're part of our families, we're part of our cultures, and what is happening in the world around us is drastically influencing our personal lives and very, very deeply shaping them. We are part of building culture and culture is what we are contained inside of. So however you might feel yourself in your body, in your uh, social location, in the place that you live, in the languages that you speak, in relationships that you have, this time on earth is an intense time and it is influencing you and your experience. This particular window of time really turns the volume up on the collective energy. There is a lot of agitation in the social realms right now. The sense of Gemini being uh, a symbol of moving air. 
um, actually is what's really happening a lot in the world right now. There's a lot of air moving around, a lot of conversations that people are having, a lot of information and misinformation floating through the airwaves. And the information that's coming in is uh, deeply emotionally uh, provocative. And I think a lot of people are experiencing all different levels of breakdown. Um, as we break down our ideas and beliefs and personal philosophies, we contribute to the breakdown of uh, the status quo consensus reality in the world. Much of it needs to be broken down. There are institutions that have been failing basically since they were built. There are ways of being that have never been sustainable and are deeply harmful and damaging uh, to our environment and to ourselves and one another. Um, I know you know, <laughs> and you're paying attention some way, somewhere. Um, and it's so big right now that it's like, you can't miss it, right? So I'll leave it there and I'll say that Gemini, this is a powerful time for you to consider how you're gonna play your role in the revolution. I've been offering to every single reading that I've been doing three key words to keep in mind for this time and also for the cycle that's beginning at this time that is taking us through the next 11 months. So from July of 2024 through June of 2025, we are working with an astrological cycle that has to do with the relationship between the planets of Jupiter and Saturn. Over the course of this time, peaking now in uh, August of 2024, again in December of this year, and then next June, uh, we really want to keep in mind how important it is to be adaptable, prepared, and keeping a broad perspective. Now, Adaptability, preparation, and perspective all go together. This is not a list ordered in any particular way. As you work towards one keyword, you are working towards all of them. Adaptability, of course, is the ability to adapt and change. We are living in times of profound and drastic change. Nobody, I think, is going to argue with that. How do we contribute with the changes in positive and generative ways? It is probably not by trying to stay the same. So adaptation is really important for evolution. Right now, Gemini, your capacity as a Gemini helps us all learn to be adaptable. As I've already been talking about, your elemental intelligence shows us how to move from one piece of information to another and find the connections between them. You teach us how to make fun of things and not take things so seriously while also uh, practicing intelligence and uh, looking for cues and clues. You teach us to have a multidimensional perspective, ideally. And now is the time that your way of being curious and collecting lots of different pieces of information is really a big piece of what the world needs. We need people showing us how to have conversations in new and different ways and how to be curious about one another across the boundaries of our differences. There is so much polarization and oppositional conflict happening right now because people are not trained in curiosity. They have literally zero skill. Somebody says something, they don't agree with it, they pull a fucking gun out and end of conversation. Not helpful. How do we temper and condition ourselves so that we can move through states of discomfort while breathing and asking questions and trying to understand where other people are coming from or how they've arrived at that place? Most people will be a lot more receptive to adaptability and seeing another point of view when they feel that their point of view is witnessed and heard. Many Geminis are masters at asking questions and actually being curious. Many Geminis have natural skill and ability to put aside their own preferences and opinions and actually just get curious about where another person is coming from because they understand that people are different. And in that uh, curiosity, in that line of questioning, new potentials for adaptation emerge. 
So Gemini, we need you showing us how to be adaptable in our minds. We also need you practicing being adaptable in your own mind, particularly when it comes to who you are and what you might do, particularly when it comes to the idea that you have knowledge and wisdom to share. There is a feeling of transition in your chart right now and a sense of you needing to take up a role of a teacher in some ways. For some of you, this requires adaptation. It requires you understanding that you have a particular role right now that is asking you to lead by example. Preparation. How can we prepare for what we don't yet know will happen? We are trying to prepare for a future in which the future is wildly unknown. All kinds of disasters are happening and will continue to happen over the course of the next several decades. Uh, if we work intelligently and coherently, we actually have so many tools, we have so many solutions, but it requires us coming together in order to have the conversations that need to be had, build alliances and solidarity across difference, so that we can meet the challenges as they emerge. The preparation that we need right now, uh, I think is social preparation. It's preparation for working together in new and different ways. This in many ways is spiritual preparation and energetic preparation. It's the ways that we work with ourselves to uh, hold the possibility and likelihood that many of our fantasies about the, you know, what the future will be or what we're entitled to in the future are simply fantasies. Um, especially for folks who uh, live in some kind of reality where the devastation of climate change hasn't yet impacted, um, there's still some kind of bubble that's happening. And many folks are just kind of ignoring it, turning away, turning away, turning away. Um, for many folks who have lived in some kind of bubble of privilege, even if it doesn't feel like you've had that much, um, it might seem inconceivable that in the very near future, there could be all kinds of circumstances that make the kinds of material privilege that you've experienced up until now totally obsolete. It is in our best interest to really turn towards the changes that are happening. Uh, that includes the devastation, it includes the heartbreak, it includes the overwhelm of it all, and prepare ourselves spiritually and energetically to experience these things. Um, we haven't even experienced the half-life of chemical breakdown and we live in a world that is full of chemicals. Yet we have the technologies, uh, we have the intelligences, we have the capacities to care for our planet, but the only way we're going to be able to care for it is if we actually look at it. We can't look at it if we're ignoring it and certainly not if we are just warring with each other. Spiritual, energetic, and relational preparation for what is coming. How do we hold space for the unknown? I'm asking you these questions specifically because I think that you have some kind of answer for it. Your chart is telling me that you are ready to step into some kind of role where you can offer the potential and the possibility of energetically embodying uh, listening, preparation, emotional maturing, and the kinds of conversational skills that allow divergent and multiple viewpoints to come together in new symphonies of coherence. Please be this kind of Gemini and not the Donald Trump kind of Gemini who is part of your Gemini family. There are other ways that this energy can go that is wildly dogmatic, that is totally fascist, that moves in some kind of direction that, you know, I have the one right way. Um, personal opinion, that's not the right way. We need diversity. We live on a planet that thrives with biodiversity. One right way is a myth and a dangerous one. If you've made it this far in your horoscope so far, I think maybe you agree. Gemini, how can you expand the conversation? This is important preparation. And in your own chart, I want to say that you also have to do this work. I'm talking about you stepping into a role of a possibility model, being a teacher and being in kind of playful communion with the world around you. You know, as you're listening to me, that all kinds of things could happen that are not that. 
in your preparation, in our preparation, we have to be ready for our expectations to fail. We have to be ready for what we long for to actually not happen. None of us are entitled to our dreams coming true, but we are here with response ability to one another to build a collective dream and to see it manifest on this planet. I believe that that is actually a really big potential in this moment of big breakdown. I think that there's a very strong, forceful, progressive wave that's building and a lot of breakthroughs in intelligence right now. When we can come together, gather that energy and ride its momentum, we're going somewhere. Gemini, be a leader in the movement. Okay, otherwise, during this period of time, uh, we have the Aquarius full moon ripening on August 19th. Aquarius is your fellow air sign. It holds a place in your chart that is high up there in the solar ninth house. This is the house of teachers and teachings. This is the place where you are at the top of the mountain and you are looking out on the horizon and you are getting the big picture. This is a full moon that is... Um, happening on the same day as multiple planetary aspects that feel really intense. Um, this is a period of time in the collective, as I've been talking about, but in your personal chart, it feels like a moment where you are really uh, able to look out on that horizon, get a big picture and make intelligent decisions about your next steps. As I began this reading, I was talking about the sensation of culmination and coming out of a period of a dark night of the soul or underworld journey of some kind. I feel that this full moon is a moment of emergence for you and a recognition of the value of what you have been through and what it has taught you and how it has prepared you for this particular moment. And that brings me to my last keyword, which is perspective. Perspective is so important right now. Keep it in perspective. Everything that I just said, right? We're not entitled to our dreams coming true. Time is long. What's emerging right now is a moment of human evolution. This moment is arising because of the causes and conditions that have created it. This moment in turn will create causes and conditions for the future. We can take an active role in shaping those causes and conditions. Ultimately, Humans are a fairly young and perhaps very temporary life form on planet Earth. Uh, universal timescales are beyond anything that we can conceive. Our lifespans in and of themselves, very, very small, very, very short. Most of us will be forgotten entirely in a couple of generations. Keeping that in mind as perspective can help us show up now for the moment. However you might hold perspective for yourself, whether that is through uh, tuning in with your own teachers and wisdom paths, or literally climbing up to the top of a mountain and looking out at the view. Um, these are really great things for you to be feeling, especially around the full moon. I hope that you take some time with this full moon to encourage your perspective to broaden in ways that feel beneficial and inspiring to you, and in ways that also continue to bring you back to this sense of playfulness and listening and uh, imaginative curiosity with what and who is around you and what and how they want to share. Okay, Gemini, please stick with me for the next couple of minutes. I am going to talk to you about some of what Embodied Astrology is doing, and I'm going to use this to tell you a little bit more about your astrology. Because Embodied Astrology is full of astrologers, we are working with planetary timing, and everything that we're offering is right on time. So the things that I have been talking to you about, we have workshops and offerings to support you through. Every single Monday, you can find me on Zoom from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Pacific in Somatic Space. Somatic Space is a weekly experiential journey through the astrology of the week ahead. We use astrology as prompts for a somatic score. We'll do guided meditation, breath work, visualization, and gentle healing movement practices. All of it is working with body-centered awareness, mind-body integration, and energy-body expansion. These uh, sessions have been enormously beneficial for me personally. The people who come to them report the same thing. 
Uh, I know that I always feel so much better at the end of class and I feel supported throughout the week because I have practices to draw upon to help me work with the energy that's coming up in the current moment. You can drop in one time and just give it a try. If you like it, you can sign up for a membership. Anyone who is a member also gets access to monthly tea time conversation spaces. Those are member only spaces. At tea time, we uh, have conversation space where we talk about astrology in our lives and in the current moment. This is a great place to learn about astrology in a low pressure way and make new friends and hang out with people who want to like nerd out about astrology in creative, expansive ways. On August 3rd, which is the day before the new moon, I'll also be uh, guest teaching with Gabs 404 in the Nebula Lab. Gabs is hosting the Nebula Lab with Embodied Astrology throughout this year, and this is a place where they're exploring the significations of the planet Neptune in relationship to visual culture and world making. Gemini, there are really big symbols that Neptune is bringing into your chart right now. Neptune is currently transiting Pisces along with Saturn, and Pisces holds the heaven of your chart. When I've been talking about this period of maturation and needing to take yourself more seriously and a kind of culmination of something that uh, has brought you into a really deep process. I'm really looking at Neptune and Saturn in Pisces for you. Um, Neptune is a generational placement. It has an orbit that's considerably longer than a human lifespan. So when we're working with it, we are working with culture. We're specifically working with the cultural imagination and the longings and the dreams of a generation. So when you tune in with Neptune, you are tuning in with a kind of uh, subliminal energy that is moving through your generational cohort. And learning to work with Neptune can be enormously supportive in contextualizing the weird, strange things that are happening on Earth, as well as the ways that you feel compelled in your personal life to participate with the unfolding consciousness. On August 3rd, I'll be giving a presentation on Neptune in your birth chart. So we'll be working very specifically with Neptune as a personal placement. Again, learning to work with Neptune in your chart is very supportive for your creativity, very supportive for connection uh, with the current moment and era, very supportive for your intuition, your spirituality, and your uh, kind of multidimensional well-being and health. On August 18th, Sherry Taylor is beginning a new three-part devotional cycle with Saturn in Pisces. So again, symbols that are moving right up in the heaven of your chart that have a lot of importance for you specifically right now. Sherry has been offering teachings, high teachings on Saturn and Pisces over the last two years. She is bringing us back to some of the mythic origins of Saturn that are deeply queer, that are deeply feminine, and that don't at all continue to perpetuate a lot of the ideas that are floating out there in popular astrology about Saturn being this like dried up time lord that just brings obstacles into your life. Not true. Saturn is a very supportive energy to work with. It's not the easiest energy to work with because its symbol has to do with life itself and life is beautiful, but also hard. Um, on August 18th, Sherry will be joined by Anders Renee, who is a fabulous astrologer who specializes in vocational astrology. This placement for you right now is literally in the place of vocation. It is calling you onto a path and asking you to formalize that path more intentionally. This would be an awesome workshop for you to take, especially if you're interested in how astrology can support you in formalizing this path. Two days later, on August 20th, Janata Petrus is hosting her uh, full moon artistic alchemy space. Every month around the full moon, Janata hosts a drop-in space where folks can come to explore and embody how the full moon polarity and axis uh, moves through their life, their inspiration, and their artistry. This month, she's going to be working with the Leo Aquarius axis in your chart. This has a lot to do with learning, with teaching, with understanding your own ministry and guidance and connecting in communion and conversation uh, with the realms around you.
Uh, Janata Spaces are really fun. They're super supportive. She gives amazing prompts and practices that you can take into your daily life. You're definitely invited to bring any particular projects you're working on, but this is really very deeply a space to think about your life as art and how you can bring more artistry and creativity into your living. Finally, I hope that you join me in October for a weekend retreat in person in Colorado in the Rocky Mountains, October 24th through 27th. I'll be co-facilitating at the Ecodharma Center uh, with my colleagues and friends, Michelle and Ramon Gabriel Laugh Parish. You might know Ramon through Embodied Astrology. He is a amazing astrologer and educator. He has a special concentration in generational cycles of astrology and is applying astrology a lot to think about systems change and community preparedness. He and Michelle have worked for a long time in the realms of environmental and food justice, and Michelle is a leader in community preparation and uh, restructuring and planning around uh, systems of deeper equity. Over the course of uh, this last weekend in October, we're going to be exploring astrology and embodiment practices and working very deeply with the land in the beautiful Rocky Mountains uh, to really feel into support for whatever is coming next. Um, for those of you who are here on Turtle Island, this is just a couple of days before the general election. I think a lot of us are feeling a fair amount of um, I don't know. For me, it's a mixture of like ennui and anxiety um, about what is happening now already and what will be happening over the course of the next many months and potentially a couple of years. Um, my particular opinion, the politicians are definitely not going to save us and we need to save ourselves. This is a time to organize with community. And that is what we are uh, skill building around at this workshop retreat and also very much working with embodied astrology. If you want more information about anything that I just said or our current and ongoing offerings, you can find it all at embodiedastrology.com. You can also follow us on any of our social media channels. We're on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere you stream your podcasts at Embodied Astrology. Gemini, I'm wishing you all best in Leo season and beyond. Bye for now.